Before we get started with the program today, I want to address a line of argument that has become pervasive in today's politics. And it centers around this concept known as whataboutism. I'm not talking about the terrible, idiotic manner that Trump justifies neo-Nazis, mass shootings. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? So that's not what I, I, I want to actually talk about today. What I want to talk about is something different. It's how this allegation of whataboutism is used consistently these days by opponents of Donald Trump, particularly partisan Democrats, in an effort to shut down discussion of U.S. misdeeds or crimes throughout history or about the policies of President Obama or Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State and the Democrats writ large. What aboutism is being portrayed as an old Soviet tactic and anyone caught using it is a suspected Bolshevik agent in today's media climate. Now, this technique of saying what about is actually an old Soviet propaganda tool. Now, no doubt that the Soviets did, in fact, use this tactic, but so too has the U.S. over and over and over. In fact, it's present in every war that the U.S. is involved with. Yes, we kill civilians, but we don't mean to. We're not like Russia and Chechnya. Well, yes, we invade countries and, and, and innocent people are killed, but what about the crimes of the leaders of those countries? R remember when George W. Bush's WMD argument fell apart? The main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't, but he had the capacity to make weapons of mass destruction. But I also talked about the human suffering in Iraq. And I also talked the need to advance a freedom agenda. And so my question, my answer to your question is, is that imagine a world in which Saddam Hussein was there, stirring up even more trouble. He then shifted to, well, Saddam was a tyrant, so it was good we overthrew him. Same with Gaddafi in Libya, and on and on and on. So no, this is not simply a Soviet tactic, and smearing people with that charge is disgraceful. The other aspect of this is the idea that somehow George W. Bush is all of a sudden a great friend of the hashtag resistance because he didn't vote for Trump and has said a few critical things about Trump. Bigotry seems emboldened. Our politics seems more vulnerable to conspiracy theories and outright fabrication. Let's be clear here. George W. Bush presided over wars that killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people. This is the day that the Pentagon hoped to instill, quote, shock and awe on the Iraqi military. And they ran a global torture program. They said the Geneva Conventions were quaint. They warehouse people at Guantanamo. But point this out online in response to someone praising George W. Bush for not voting for Trump, and you're bound to get immediate pushback from someone saying, hey, Trump is, is unprecedented. We need all hands on deck, and we have to be able to see the utility of alliances even with people like George W. Bush. It's necessary to defeat this unprecedented threat posed by Trump. Somehow David Frum and Bill Kristol and George Bush, they're our friends. I reject that completely. You cannot erase the murderous past of George W. Bush and his allies and act like all that matters is opposing Trump. Without a whataboutism in that conversation, it's a vapid, bankrupt embrace of a man who destroyed literally countless lives across our planet. I wouldn't embrace Charles Manson as my ally if he published an op-ed calling for Trump's impeachment. No thanks. The leader of the Democrats in the House, Nancy Pelosi, has said she prays that George W. Bush was still president. president oh, I'm so sorry, Trump. President Bush. <laughs> I never thought I'd pray for the day that you were president again. Chuck Schumer said that Bush's response to 9-11 was worthy of praise. And Keith Olbermann, he's one of the leading hashtag resistance generals now, he actually went on TV, on The View, and apologized to George W. Bush. I probably owe George W. Bush an apology. Shut up. And I would happily take a third term of George W. Bush rather than this. History matters. Context matters. Part of why the U.S. war machine keeps going unchecked at mock speed is because of the mythology that has been aggressively promoted 
by Democrats and Republicans alike, and that every child in this country is taught from the time they start going to school. That's why we got the Patriot Act. That's how we got the 2001 authorization for the use of military force that gave a blank check for a global, borderless, unaccountable war. That's how we got the Iraq War. It was all bipartisan and done in the name of protecting our security and protecting our exceptionalism. That's why the U.S. has constantly blocked the establishment of an international criminal court that would have jurisdiction over all nations, including the United States, when its forces commit war crimes. But our lives are worth more. Our crimes matter not at all. It all boils down to this demonstrably false notion of American exceptionalism. Donald Trump is a horrid president and has shown fascist and authoritarian intent in both his words and his policy ideas. But let's not pretend he's some alien who landed here speaking a different language. Mostly Donald Trump's crimes consist of saying things out loud that a lot of right-wingers prefer to be whispered in private. I love all people, rich or poor, but in those particular positions, I just don't want a poor person. Does that make sense? Or of trying to impose destructive policies by fiat that a lot of Republicans want, but can't exactly get through Congress. And Trump definitely acts as an oligarch, and he certainly has aspects of his presidency that are unique just to him. But Trump has not yet killed anywhere close to the number of innocent people that Bush and Cheney killed. Now, he may well surpass them, but he has a long way to go. Barack Obama maintained a secret kill list and asserted the right to kill American citizens who had not even been charged with a crime. That's the epitome of acting like a king or an emperor. Trump is continuing a program that Obama put on steroids for him. So let's stop with this revisionism. And I'm perfectly fine with what abouting anyone who tries to tell me that Bush is our ally. The correct answer is what about all the people he killed? What about the damage he did to our civil liberties and our security? What about your own conscience getting into league with someone viewed by many across the globe as a war criminal? Yeah, I'm guilty of whataboutism because facts matter. Context matters. The truth matters. If we as a society were actually honest about what happens in our wars, about who actually gets killed, how often we do the very things, albeit in our own American way, as those we condemn as despots or tyrants or terrorists, then the whole dialogue would change. We might actually learn from our own history. The same is true about the Democrats and their role in all of this. We should be talking about it all. So let's stop this bullshit of dismissing history and context from everything. Let's have an honest conversation about the real policies and the real history of this country. Let's talk about the wars, election interference, the way the U.S. economy functions, our health care, our schools, our housing, our guns, our prisons. From now on, when someone accuses you of engaging in whataboutism, just imagine that what they're really saying is, shut up, I don't want to hear inconvenient facts. Imagine that is what they're saying to you, because that is what they're really saying. And then you decide how to respond. Mm -hmm.